So in the 50 or so videos that I've done on the Steam Deck so far, I have shown you very little in the way of captured gameplay footage. Most of the time I'll remix trailer footage of certain games, or if I'm lucky and a game was a multi-platform title, then I'll use previously captured footage from another console to kind of fill in some of those gaps. Now alternatively, whenever I'm vetting games to actually recommend in those style of videos, usually what I'll do is just straight up film the Steam Deck itself to kind of give you an idea of what the gameplay looks like and what the portable experience is like. Now sometimes I'm really happy with those results, and other times, admittedly, it does not look so hot. But thankfully you've been really kind and understanding about times when I've actually, you know, kind of borked the image up a little bit and it's either overexposed or underexposed, and really a lot of that comes down to the fact that it's really hard to film screens, or at least it is for me. And that really comes down to a few different reasons, chief among them is it's really difficult to expose not only for the screen, which is basically its own light source, and then also the external lighting that I have set up to kind of light up things like, you know, the background or the housing of the Steam Deck itself. And then on top of that, there's also the matter of frame rate, because I tend to film in 60 frames per second, which is awesome whenever the screen is set to run at, you know, 60 hertz, but whenever I set it to something like 40 or 50, you start to see weird artifacting and disparities, and yeah, it's just a whole big ordeal. So long story short, what I tried to do over the past few weeks was set up to finally find a prop <laughs> not a problem to the solution that's not right let me try that again over the past few weeks what i tried to do was set out to find a solution to this problem so that i could provide a better look at gameplay and finally start capturing footage regularly now i actually did try this early on and had mixed results mostly because it seems like some of the early steam deck titles that i tried did not scale up very well to a 4k tv but that was also before i learned about fine tuning the resolution to make sure that i could get the best image quality without totally tanking the frame rate and having the game just absolutely look horrible when it's blown up to the big screen but first, let's take a look at the hardware and software that I use to make this setup work, beginning with the components and connections themselves. And I'm going to go ahead and work backwards from here, beginning with where I ultimately store all this data that I capture from gameplay on the Steam Deck. So this is my M1 Mac Mini that is my primary workhorse for editing, and it's connected via a Thunderbolt connection to this Sabrent USB 3.2 5 bay docking station for internal hard drives. Right now I'm keeping all of my gameplay captures in Bay 3 here, which has about 14 terabytes of space at the moment. And this was actually a gift from my parents for Christmas, which I am super thankful for because it allowed me to stop just buying tons and tons of external hard drives to hold all of this data. So it's a really nice kind of consolidated way to make sure that I have plenty of space available at any one time to actually store all of this captured gameplay footage. Well, that and also all the A roll and B roll and, you know, tons of other data that I have to use for making these videos. Now separately I have a USB-A to USB-C cable that goes from the Mac Mini to an Elgato HD 60S. Plus. Now this is a slightly older capture card at this point, and I think its updated successor is the HD60X, although I haven't really done enough research on that card to know if it has any major advantages, but the HD60S Plus is what I've got, and it seems to still be working pretty well so far. And while it's pretty excellent for my purposes, it's not 100% perfect, but I'll get to that later on. Now from the HD60S Plus, I have an HDMI cable that goes from its input to the output on the official Steam Deck dock. Now at some point I would love to try some more third-party docks, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet, so maybe someday I'll actually test out a few others to see if it also works with this setup. But for now I'm continuing to use Valve's official offering, and it's been performing great. And in turn, the dock is obviously connected to my Steam Deck, albeit with one small tweak that is actually thanks to a commenter on this channel, Frank Bennett, who pointed out on my review of the official Steam Deck dock that he wishes it had a longer cable. And while I appreciate the neatness of having a super short cable, I started to see what he meant that it would be nice to kind of keep the Steam Deck in hand while you're still docked up. So lucky for you, Frank, one of the things that I found on Amazon was a, I think, six foot USB-C extension cable for exactly this purpose. It's a female to male extension cable that allows you to still plug into the dock, still draw power, still get all the speed that you need for the connection, but to sit further away from it, which is helpful for me because if you can tell back here where the dock is behind me, I like to be able to sit at the desk and look at the capture footage right in front of me. So that extension cable makes it easy for me to leave the dock where it is, but then also extend it a little bit so that I can play like a gigantic controller in my hands. Now I realize that I could pair any number of wireless controllers that I have laying around for this purpose, but I really like the idea of keeping the Steam Deck in hand, especially if there's something that glitches out while I'm trying to capture footage or working with a particular game or experimenting with something, that way I have quick access to the power button or if I want to swap out cards or something like that, I already have the unit in hand. So real quick, just to go the other direction, I have the Steam Deck in my hands, which is connected to an extension cable, which goes to the Steam Deck dock, which then connects through HDMI to the capture card, which is then connected through USB-C to the Mac Mini, which is then connected through a Thunderbolt cable to the Sabrent 5 Bay Drive Array, which is holding the hard drive that holds all of my capture gameplay footage. That sounds really complicated. So now that we've gone over all of the different hardware components that are part of this setup, now let's look at software and workflows. And first, let's talk about why the HD 60S Plus is great, but not quite perfect for the way that I use it. And really what it comes down to is because of a disconnect between Apple Silicon and Elgato's Game Capture HD software. 
So when Apple switched over to using their own processors on their computers back around 2020, I want to say, the Mac Mini was the cheapest way to get in the game. And at the time, I'd been using the same 5K iMac that I'd had since about 2014 or 2015, I want to say, and it was starting to get a little bit long in the tooth, not quite performing the way that it used to, so I decided to go ahead and take the leap on a Mac Mini, and wow, it was a crazy fast upgrade and remains a crazy fast machine for me to this day. Unfortunately, while I really love the speed of the M1 Mac Mini, something that I could not have foreseen is that unfortunately the Game Capture HD software software that I was used to using for capturing gameplay footage did not work very well with the Mac and its ability to recognize the HD 60s Plus. It was hit or miss at best and mostly miss. But thankfully, and perhaps for the better, OBS came to the rescue. Now here's the thing, I had used OBS previously back when I was doing a lot of streaming, but it's also really adept at capturing video and gives you a ton of options in terms of how you want to fine tune the output file. You can have super huge files with absolutely gorgeous quality, you can have really small files with questionable quality, or you can go for a nice medium file size that has pretty good quality. And that's generally the option that I've gone for. So I pretty much just make sure all these components are connected, fire up OBS, fire up the Steam Deck, and then I can start recording gameplay footage in pretty good quality without creating gigantic file sizes. And unlike Elgato's Game Capture HD software, OBS has been awesome at detecting the HD 60s Plus, and it's been a really smooth experience so far. However, I did have to make a few configuration changes within the OBS interface to make sure that I was capturing the footage the way that I wanted it to appear. The first is that depending on the scenario, I might change the resolution of the dock to either 1280 by 800 at 60 frames per second, if I'm going to put the gameplay behind like a still image of the Steam Deck like this, or I'll set the resolution to 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution I output my videos at on the channel, if I'm just going to be showing off footage in a full screen sort of way. I'm still not 100% sure if I need to tinker more with that external display safe mode setting, but I imagine the more I continue to capture footage for the Steam Deck, the more I'll learn about these various options and how they'll produce the best quality. And the second thing I needed to configure within OBS was rethinking how I did my audio capture. You have to add your capture device as an audio source to get audio as well, but I also needed to go into the advanced audio properties and set the capture card audio source to both monitor and output. This made sure that the audio was going to go to the captured file, but also that I could hear the gameplay in my headphones that were connected to the Mac Mini, since I'm doing all of my gameplay straight off of OBS rather than using the card's pass-through to play it on a TV. Now I suppose I could do it this way and just use the HDMI out from the capture card and its pass-through just to play on an external monitor, but I like playing directly off of the Mac because that allows me to do things like listen to music in the background or make sure that I can still have access to my notes if I'm you know, getting stuff down for a certain game I'm covering or just do other production tasks while I'm in the middle of playing a game, so I'll probably keep doing it this way for now. So yeah, after everything's connected, I fire up OBS, fire up the Steam Deck to start sending the video signal to the capture card, and then I'm pretty much good to just hit the start record button. And at that point, after I start recording, it will start dumping that file to my desktop, and then when I'm done with the recording session, I will rename that file according to my naming structure, drop it into my game captures drive, and then from there, I will import it to any editing drives to make sure that I have it available for projects like, well, this video that you're watching right now. Now admittedly, I'm still in the early days of using this setup, but I have to say I've been pretty pleased with the results so far. And that video that I did last week where I talked about cozy games to play for winter, I think that was the first one where I really tried using the captured footage, and I think it turned out pretty well. But I'm going to go ahead and drop affiliate links below for all the different hardware components that I'm using here and links to the software that I'm using if you're not familiar with OBS. But if you have any questions about my setup or if you just see any obvious gaps in the way that I'm doing things or have any recommendations, I would love to hear about it. I'm all ears. But yeah, if you have any questions, again, just let me know. As always, thank you for your time and hanging out here on the channel. It really means a lot to me. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.